But most people wouldn't notice. Most people would be like, oh, this is a fantastic sedan because it is a fantastic sedan. <laughs> So I have to preface this review real quick with a little piece of information. Full disclosure, the Honda Accord is one of my favorite vehicles of all time, okay? I absolutely love the Honda Accord. I've owned two Honda Accords, a 2004 sedan and a 2009 coupe, and I've driven the previous gen, which I sort of consider one of the best overall sedans ever made. But now we have this new one here, and it's not without a little bit of controversy because some people don't love the styling. Some people don't love the fact that the engines are not as powerful as they are. The more powerful engine isn't offered anymore. And so my primary question as someone who's a big fan of the Honda Accord is, is this still a Honda Accord? Let's answer that. In regards to the styling, I'll be the first to admit, and, and I, I'm gonna be 100% honest because I like the Honda Accord so much, I don't love the way that the front end looks. I honestly don't. To me, it looks like the old Ford Taurus or you know something along those lines. It doesn't have that sort of same sense of presence. There was always something about the Honda Accord. There was like a little bit more of a sporty flair compared to its rivals like the Nissan Altima and the Toyota Camry. The Accord always looked a little bit more like a Japanese interpretation of sort of a Germanic style sedan. And recently where the Camry has become more uh, expressive, we'll say, in its styling. And some of the renders of the upcoming Camry look downright awesome as Toyota's styling direction gets better and better. I'm not sure that this Accord really strikes that. It's, it's too safe. It's just too restrained. And the front end, I don't think the Taurus sort of dig is unwarranted. It really does. I'll put it on screen. It really does have that kind of look. And that's not a good thing. Now, Around back, let's take a look at the back real quick. And I'm gonna bring Megan in because I was the primary driver of the Accord this week. She had something else. She's been driving a Lincoln Corsair. I'll bring her in real quick to see what she thinks from a more neutral perspective. And then we'll go around back. So we have the Honda Accord hybrid. Is that hybrid. all it's, Is that all it's called? Uh, no other touring special. trim. Touring trim. Top trim. Top trim. Um, the outside, I don't really love. I mean, I'm not a big sedan gal, but I can appreciate a nice looking sedan. And I just think this is kind of boring. Um, there's just nothing like that stands out that you're like, oh, that's kind of cool or that's kind of cool. The back end is super boring, I think. The front end is okay, but I just, I don't know. I don't think anything really stands out. And I don't like this color. It's just like navy. I think it just, maybe if it was in red or. And you're a former Accord owner. I did, but I had a silver one. I just thought it looked better. Did it look better? Uh, I, mean, I mean, that was quite a few time, years ago. But yeah, that was 2004. Yeah, I mean, it probably looked good for uh, that time or whatever, but I don't know. I just don't look at this and really see anything special about it, which is kind of sad because I do like Hondas. Well, let's take a look at the back just to, uh, to get the trunk okay. space too. Okay. Now, this is a better angle, as you can see. And I like that they're doing a little bit of a throwback to the Honda Accords of the past. So there is that. I, I don't mind the back end nearly as much. I think the roof line is a little safe, but then again, it is roomier inside than the overall shape would suggest. We just had the Toyota Crown not that long ago, and the Crown is a roomy car, but for its size compared to this, the Accord is actually, I would say, slightly roomier for someone my size. Now, that being said, let's check in with Megan. What does she think of the back rear styling? So you don't love the back end No, styling. it's so boring. Look at it. Like, I just think it's boring. The head, the rear lights are boring. The shape is boring. The, I don't know. I just think it's very boring. Um, let's look at the trunk space. Does it have a lot? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's just decent. I don't know. I, 17 I like, cubic feet. Is that good? Uh, it's a little less than the crown. Your stuff is in here making a It making always a is. Um, I mean, I could fit in there if you needed me to. We could fit uh, luggage in there to go somewhere, but I don't know. I just feel like this is very boring. And like I said, this color is doing absolutely nothing for it. So don't buy it in this navy blue color. So thumbs um, down on the color. Yeah, it's just blah. I don't, <laughs> okay. 
Okay, cool. Now let's look at the trunk space because nowadays with SUVs, trunk space is important. People love the sort of spaciousness of SUVs, the cargo hold of SUVs. The Accord has 17 cubic feet of trunk space, which is pretty good actually for a vehicle of this size. I would say personally, if you are in the market for a sedan, you're not gonna be disappointed with the trunk space on the Honda Accord. It's gonna be enough. Most people are not gonna buy this as their primary vehicle. They're gonna have some type of truck or SUV in the driveway. For us, this would be something that I would drive and Megan has an SUV of some kind. So it makes sense. I think 17 cubic feet is pretty good. But on the note of spaciousness, let's look at the interior. Now, as you can see on the inside of the Honda Accord, I am six foot six and I have plenty of room. And this is where I would have the seat for me and Megan would likely drive with the seat in approximately the same spot because she likes to have her legs more extended. So the interior of the cord is very spacious. And I also like the driving position. I like the materials. The wheel is perfect. It's exactly where I want it to be. The shifter falls right to hand. And like I said, the interior ambiance, Honda's new sort of aesthetic with the three climate control dials and the sort of grading across the vents. It looks really good. It looks really good. And the Accord operates all of Honda's latest technology. So you have this large infotainment screen as well as a digital gauge cluster. Let's talk about that more for just one second before we get into the powertrain. Oh, and the driving experience, because if you like Accords like me, I know you want to know about the driving experience, but we'll get to that. So this is a touring trim, which means it's Honda's highest trim level. And it basically feels like it. You have a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster, which looks fantastic. You also have this 12.3 inch infotainment screen. And because this is the top touring trim, you get the Google integration. That's great. That's all well and good. But one of the things that impresses me most about this screen is the fact that CarPlay, this is some of the fastest CarPlay connection that I've ever experienced and it connects instantaneously and it hasn't messed up yet. So I find that to be very impressive. You also get heated and cooled seats. You get a sunroof. Um, you get pretty much everything that you could want in here. There's not many things that I am wanting for. You also get a head up display, a really nice head up display. So in terms of the interior ambiance of the Accord, um, this is an impressive package. The Bose audio system is also quite good. And I think at $39,000, basically, this feels like, dare I say it, a $39,000 vehicle. It feels like a value, considering that the average transaction price of vehicles is so high now. So I like the layout, I like the tech, I like the, oh, one other thing that I wanna point out is the Honda safety systems are excellent. I do think the brake warning is a little hypersensitive. It flashes quite a bit when bad drivers are around. But stay tuned, I'm gonna take the Accord on a bit of a road trip to go to another media event. So I'll make a quick separate video about what it's like to live with, you know, if you're actually commuting and traveling, just in case you're wondering. Quick update on the Honda Accord as a road trip vehicle. So I just got back from Charleston, South Carolina. So I had the Honda Accord hybrid for an entire week. And then I drove it four and a half hours to Charleston, South Carolina for a media event and then back again. And so as a road trip vehicle, this thing never went below 43 miles per gallon, which is pretty fantastic to be honest with you. The ride was perfection. The seats were comfortable. It had heated and cooled seats. I had the cooled seats running when it was warm. It was a superb road trip vehicle. Now, whatever complaints in this video that I have about whether or not the Honda Accord hybrid feels like a true kind of Honda Accord as a, you know, former Accord enthusiast, current Accord enthusiast, it, it's irrelevant from a road trip perspective. This is about as good of a road trip sedan as you could possibly hope to have. And it really calls up the question of like, this this did so much good like as a road trip vehicle has a huge trunk a spacious back seat it rides better than pretty much any suv well definitely any suv at this price range at thirty nine thousand dollars it it just feels so much better to me to road trip in something like this and it made me like a little nostalgic for the day where like large comfy cars were the sort of de facto road trip vehicle unless you for some reason needed to haul a whole bunch of stuff and it made me want to drive the family around in something like this like when we go to disney we don't need to carry a bunch of luggage rather than take a giant suv 
We need more sedans, people. So I have not driven this car. So right. we were I, busy this week. We were busy and I had to be driving another car. Um, so I'm just talking about the looks of the car. Um, I love the steering wheel. It's pretty good. It has the thing here that I don't love, but I'm getting used to it. I feel like they all have that now. Um, it's called a spoke. Yeah, but like they're it used to not, my car doesn't have that. My old Well, you, because your car. car has four spokes. Oh, is that a thing? Well, some do, but three are considered sportier. Oh, okay. But I don't, I don't know. I just don't love this. But I do like the way it feels. It's nice and, and like good material. I like this. What is this called? You said all the Hondas have this. Yeah, thing. it's Honda's new design aesthetic with the yeah. like the vents and stuff. I think it looks cool. I mean, there's nothing like super. I don't know. The inside kind of to me matches the outside. It's just a little boring. Like, I think I like the inside better than I like the outside for sure. Um, I think the buttons are nice. I mean, the display is nice. I, I just feel like it's a little boring. Is that has that been a complaint? Um, I think Honda's playing it safe. But they could be a little more exciting. Okay. I don't know. Everyone loves Hondas. Like Hondas have a great re reliability. They have a great reputation. Go. There Everybody you go. knows an Accord is a great sedan. So like, let's do something a little crazy. You know, like to make us stick out. I just don't think I'd be like, ooh, if I was comparing multiple sedans, I don't think I'd be like, ooh, that Honda Accord is good looking, because it's just average you know but so to win over sedan buyers they gotta, gotta take do risks. something yes like the ionic i hate the way the ionic looked but i loved the interior of it like because it was different it was oh, cool it was okay. different it like stuck out that's you know? a hot take hot take this just doesn't stick out and i want it to stick out more because okay. i do love a honda and i want to be a honda fan i want to support honda <laughs> and <laughs> you want to support i honda. do i do but it's a little boring but this scene is what about the pilot you just had I, I loved that. I loved that. So if, would you, if you consider the pilot video. for your next car? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I did like it, and I loved that color it was in. Right. The looked... So the Trail Sport, if you haven't seen that video, check yeah, it out. Yeah, I wouldn't get a regular pilot, though. I would get the Trail Sport Only the one. Trail Sport. Yes. Okay. But this just doesn't, like, that one had all sorts of cool stuff that stood out to me, and this one really does not. Okay. So the seats are super comfortable, though. Yeah, Honda seats are yeah. amazing. Like, all the material looks really, like, it looks very nice. I'll give it that. Yeah. It looks nice. It looks high quality. It just doesn't look special, and I want it to look special if I'm going to spend my money. All right. So that's just me. You want to see what the back seat looks like? Yeah. So for perspective, this is what it's like in the back seat of the Honda Accord. If I sit back like I normally would, I have at six foot six about one centimeter of headroom, and that's not bad. I was a little bit more crunched in the Toyota Crown. I actually have more leg room in the Accord. There's more space under the seat. I can kind of spread my knees apart. It's just generally a little bit roomier because the Crown's swoopy profile. And the reason I'm mentioning the Crown is because we just had it, so go check out that review if you want to see it for comparison. Keep in mind, though, that the Toyota Crown cost $10,000, the one that we had more than this to get it sort of comparably equipped. So you know, there's that, um, even though the crown is far better looking. We'll get into that later anyway. Um, so this gives you sort of an idea of what a tall person would be like in the back of a Honda Accord. And that gives you an idea what a person with no muffler sounds like. It's public park, folks. Oh, by the way, in the back seat, rear passengers get vents and charge ports. And that's about it. Um, I'm in the back seat. By the way, I forgot to tell you the Stanley fits. Perfectly. Yeah, Honda cup holders are apparently Stanley approved. Yeah, does it fit? Is there a cup holder back here? I think in the armrest, yeah. Does it fit the Stanley? And the reason I'm doing this is because the review... No, no, it doesn't. Oh. And the review I'm going to do later, the back seat also doesn't fit the Stanley. And you know what? People in the back seat might want a they Stanley. They deserve a Stanley. Because I was driving in the back seat the other day in the other car, and my Stanley didn't fit. And so I had to hold it the whole way, and it was oh. like a 30-minute drive, and I just wasn't really happy. Strike. But so strike one. Um, but this back seat's super comfortable. Um, these seats are very nice. I kind of like how it's like a bench. It's like one big, I don't know. I just yeah, kind of like it. It's very roomy. Yeah. And I can sit behind and myself. And the, the heads, I have my big butt on today, you know, because the hair was yeah. looking a little crazy. And the tall roof, uh, the bun is real comfy. And I'm super comfortable here. I have tons of leg room. And I, that's, this is how I would have driven, which yep. I drive further back than you. So pretty good. Yes. I think it's because I'm all leg. Short torso, all leg. This is true. That's that's the problem. Not a problem. <laughs> you just, just said that's you're the a problem. Situation. I'm not a problem. Okay. That is my situation, which is why I drive really far back. But anyway, and so if my big old legs, my big long legs can fit back here, and my big long legs can fit back there, then 
We got a lot of space. So very roomy. Under the hood of the Honda Accord Hybrid is a two liter four cylinder, making 204 horsepower and 247 combined pounds feet of torque. So those are the numbers for the hybrid system combined with a two liter four cylinder. Now, there's one thing that you wanna note about this versus something like the Toyota Camry Hybrid, okay? Honda and Toyota go about things in different ways. And let me drastically oversimplify for you guys so you understand what you're getting and why you're getting it, okay? The Honda Accord Hybrid only comes in front wheel drive, all right? And that's because the motor in the Honda Accord sort of acts like more of a generator and it's feeding the electric motors that power the front wheels, which is one of the reasons why you don't get all wheel drive in the Honda Accord, you only get front wheel drive. Whereas in Toyota hybrid systems, they use an electric motor on the rear to kind of give it four wheel drive or all wheel drive with sort of a front split of like, combined horsepower in the front and electric horsepower in the rear. Now there's pros and cons to each of these sort of setups. In the Camry, you're gonna notice that the engine's running more often, but it tries to switch into EV mode as often as possible. In the Accord, the engine doesn't seem to run as stressed, but it's not in EV mode maybe quite as much. I would sort of say in real world usage, both of these vehicles are incredibly efficient. You're getting mid 40s. I'm averaging right now 48 miles to the gallon. I've been driving mostly suburban driving. And like I said, I am gonna go on a little bit of a road trip to Charleston. So from Atlanta to Charleston, South Carolina for a media event. And I'll do a quick update video on the Accord while I'm in the process of that trip. So I'll kind of give you more of a real world look at how it is on a road trip. But around town and sort of suburban driving, I'm getting 47, 48 miles per gallon no problem, not even trying. But how does that affect the driving experience? Remember the overall question of this video has been for someone like me, who's a huge fan of the Honda Accord, is this still a Honda Accord? So this is the part that most people wanna know about because if you are even thinking about buying a sedan, then you wanna know what it's like to ride, how's the ride, how's the drive and all that kind of stuff. But if you like Honda Accords like me, the question I keep. Is that what this is? Yes, this is the Honda Accord Hybrid. This is the fully loaded touring trim. Hybrid, do you have to plug it in? Nope, this okay. is a regular hybrid. So the kind That's you like, like, yep, you yes. like regular hybrids. And it's Honda Accord, which means it has a certain sort of set of characteristics that people expect in the driving experience. Um, what does that even mean? It means we'll that the Honda Accord is a legend. It is oh. one of the best all around sedans. Wait, I used to have one. Yes, you used to have, we, yeah, we had a Honda Accord. We've had two Honda Accords. I, uh, I mentioned this elsewhere. And so we are not just talking about it from a reviewing standpoint. We have owned uh, multiple Honda Accords. I loved my car. Yeah, you really like the Honda Accord. And for you, I think you would love this one. Uh, Megan's been occupied driving a Lincoln Corsair this week, so I've been driving this primarily because I'm a big Accord fan. Um, and I think she would absolutely love this if she liked SUVs. Now you like the Honda Pilot. If you I just, like sedans, you mean. I mean sedans, right, because you prefer SUVs. I do. Um, and you really like the Honda Pilot a lot. I, I actually like the way this drives better. It has a little bit of that Accord DNA. From a sedan, let's talk about the pros. From a sedan standpoint, driving position is excellent. It feels good. The ride is comfortable. When you're driving a Honda Accord, there's this sort of sporty demeanor. The Honda Accord is probably the best example of a super mainstream vehicle that someone like me, who's a driving enthusiast, would still really enjoy driving because it just has that little bit more button down suspension, a little bit more attention to detail paid with the steering and the brake and the gas and all the relationships of the driving experience so that your normal driver like you when you had your Honda Accord you enjoy it but it's got that little bit of extra something that an enthusiast also enjoys and that's what always set the Honda Accord apart I'm not sure this one does and I know it's Why, the hybrid. It's hybrid no it's not the hybrid thing it's just the suspension is tight ish but not quite as tight as I would expect from a Honda Accord the steering is okay, but it's not quite what I expect from a Honda Accord. Now, for you, ah, you would sorry. probably oh, be no, like, no, no. Oh, well, no. this is the old handling the road. Is really um, yeah, no, that's okay. And the Accord handles bad pavement superbly. Like, it is a great ride, um, and it is very controlled. But I just am not sure it's giving you that little bit of sporty edge that makes the Accord special, that, that's given the Accord its reputation. But I have to say this, for all of you watching that are just interested in a sedan, this might be like the 
perfect combination of attributes from behind the wheel. I mean, the seat is amazing, the steering wheel feels good, the ride is comfortable, um, the way that the car accelerates and decelerates in hybrid form is really nice, the brake pedal is progressive, it's got really good uh, kind of modulation, it doesn't get too grabby or anything. So like, this is like a perfect sedan. Is it better than an Ultima? Yeah. Is it better than uh, the Camry Hybrid? Yes, which is old, but it's better than the Camry Hybrid. Better than the Sonata, better than the Kia, you know, uh, K5. I, this footage is going to be terrible. Well, I it's expect so I expect nothing less. Oh, than thank. Me. Oh, shut up. No, that really this is the best all-around sedan that you can buy. I'm just not sure it's got enough of that Honda Accord DNA. That's why? my it's a Honda Accord. So well, why doesn't it have Honda Accord DNA? Is it a different type? The vibe doesn't have the Honda Accord vibe, where the suspension is a little firmer. Is that firmer. all just because it's a hybrid? No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with the fact then that it's I a hybrid. I don't understand. Like, it, the Honda Accord should ride a little sportier. It should drive a little sportier than any other sedan in this segment. And this regular mid-size sedan. It just, no, it just doesn't feel like it has that little bit of specialness. But most people wouldn't notice. Most people would be like, oh, this is a fantastic sedan. Because it is a fantastic sedan. But does it feel like, to me, as someone who loves a Honda Accord, does it feel like a Honda Accord? Not quite. It's like 80% of a Honda Accord. But it is a Honda Accord. But it is still a Honda Accord by so name. it's actually 100% yes. Honda Accord. Well, you're Captain Literal, so <laughs> of course you would say that. But... I think if someone is an enthusiast of an Accord, they're going to be missing that little bit of DNA. Which is what you are. Yes, I love Honda Accords. I think it's the best all-around sedan. And this still is the best all-around sedan. That's the thing. It still is the best. It's just, just it's yeah, it needs like 20% more. All right, so what's your overall impression, even though you didn't drive it? Because you don't need to do your yeah, whole Yeah, because you said I can't rate the car, but like I can see it. So like... Oh, okay, like I so exterior, I won't break the driving because okay. I don't know. So the exterior, exterior and interior I'm going ratings. like a six. Oh, ouch. It's just really boring. Okay. I, I just think, like, I honestly would rather think it's Long -time ugly. Long-time viewers like, will know. Is that weird? I would rather feel like this is an ugly car than, like, it's a boring car. Okay. Because, like, at least you're talking about it. At least there's something different. At least you're like, well, it's not the greatest looking, but look how cool they, they did try this. And they're trying, you know. Okay. I just feel like it's real safe and boring, and I don't love it. I mean, maybe a seven. Uh, at max, six, right. between six and seven. So not great. No, not great. The interior, I'll go higher. I'll give it like an eight, um, maybe a seven and a half. It's it's kind of boring, but it has great quality, great quality leather. Is it real leather? Uh, and on this level, probably. Yeah, I mean it looks real. Close the, enough. The, I like the little, um, the thingy. The that car is driving. They're trying to teach their kid to drive. By, They're trying to teach their kid to drive right circles. next to us. So it's just. The out, it's just boring. The outside's boring. The interior, what did I say? Now you've made me forget. No, you didn't give it a rating I yet. did? No. No, I did. I said seven and a half or eight. I did. No, I the did. exterior you said. No, the interior I said between a six and a seven. No, the exterior you said between a six or a seven. Yes, the and interior. the interior I said between a seven and a half and eight. Oh, I okay, did absolutely okay. do that. Okay, so you went up we, to There eight. is footage of it, by okay. the way. We can go Should rewind. Should throw the red flag like that Yeah, commercial? yeah, like, yes, yes. And then right. where the guy comes in the car and, yeah. and yeah, and the wife is always right. Um, <laughs> where the wife is always right. That's why you like that commercial. Exactly. Um, but the interior, I'll go seven and a half, eight. It's great quality. It looks really nice. I don't have any complaints right. about it. Um, the interior is much better looking than the exterior. So the Camry is old, but we just had the Toyota Crown. So this How many or, are they gonna drive? or a Toyota Crown. I don't know. This dad um, teaching his daughter can drive. They but can. they're just teaching him to drive in circles. Like, I know. That's not really yeah. super useful. They need to watch this channel. For the road. <laughs> yeah. So this like, or the, the Toyota road. Crown that we just had. Um, I hate when you put me on the spot like this. Maybe the Toyota Crown. For the style? Yeah. Okay. The, the exterior is just super boring. But like, if you want a car that like doesn't stick out and doesn't have anything like crazy about it, then maybe this, you know, there are some people who just want like, I just want a reliable car that doesn't like they have any- They just want transportation. Yeah, I just want transportation that is reliable. This would probably be a great car for them. All right. right? All right, so, well, I guess I, that's my hot take. I will sum and, up. So I'm going to sum this one up since this vehicle was my test vehicle for the week. And being a huge Accord fan, uh, I have Megan give you input from sort of like the other half of the family. But this would be someone like my primary car. And I'm also, you know, absolutely love Accords. So here's what I think overall. Is this new Honda Accord an Accord? Well, 
That's a difficult question to answer. After living with this thing for well over a week, about a week and a half, and driving it in suburban driving, and driving it on a road trip, here's my conclusion. This sedan is a nearly perfect sedan. I'm not sure if it's a Honda Accord. Honda built what is probably the best all-around sedan currently on sale right now. You get phenomenal gas mileage. You get excellent tech and options. You have plenty of space. It's reliable, it's quiet, it's efficient. It's all the things you could possibly want from a sedan. It rides well, it drives good enough. Like it's everything most normal people could want from a sedan. But as a longtime Honda Accord fan, as a longtime sort of devotee of the Honda Accord like model lineup. I love the Honda Accord so much and I have so many good feelings about it. I'm just not sure that this really is what I would consider a Honda Accord. I think the Honda Accord needs to have about 10% more sportiness in the ride, about 25% more sportiness in the powertrain. If we're being honest, it's more like 50% more sportiness in the powertrain, but I'm trying to give you a little, you know, give a little ground here, but maybe like 50% more sportiness in the powertrain, and then about 25 to 50% more sportiness in the styling, especially in like a sport trim. The previous gen sport trim looked fantastic, and this one just looks fine, okay? So let's wrap it up with that, okay? I think this is the sedan perfected. The Honda Accord might be the perfect sedan, but I'm not sure it's a Honda Accord anymore, all right? Let me know in the comments what you think, and what do you think about the upcoming Toyota Camry? How does that compare? One of the reasons that I kept mentioning the Toyota Crown is because we recently had it, and the Camry is really long in the tooth, and the new one is coming up, and the Camry Hybrid's about the same price as this. I would take this right now, personally, I would take this over any form of the Camry, because it just feels a little newer and a little fresher, but, because this thing isn't super sporty, Toyota could really pull one over on Honda here. The new Toyota Camry, if it has a sporty like version, a sporty trim, and they make that XSE, especially the XSE hybrid, sportier than this, I think they might steal a little of the Honda Accord's thunder. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, please consider liking it. Please consider sticking around for more of our reviews on the channel. And until next time, we'll see you in the next review. If you want to see more videos where I, I have to deal this. with this guy, I you did, did all this. But they would rather hear from me. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Oh, well, so I'm just going to put this over the, at the end of mine? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Oh, so now you you're telling me to go? Yeah. Now you're directing? Yeah, and remember we're driving, so I need you to talk about the driving part. Okay? Oh, okay. Not the interior or the exterior. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you do it to me. Because <laughs> I'm the expert. Yeah, are you going to start? We're just wasting pr precious filming time here. Oh my gosh, Did, did, people, did people vote? No, well, I haven't checked if oh, anybody no. said anything, but you know, since you're just gonna stop, right? Okay, can we not do that every <laughs> single time I say comfortable? It, it just irks me. Okay, okay. comfortable, yeah. comfortable, comfortable, okay, that's not... comfortable. All right, is that how you want me to say it? Oh, my comfortable. Gosh. No, I want you to say comfortable. Comfortable. Thank you. Comfortable. Why do you? Oh my gosh. I have to Continue. do a weird voice because the only way I can say comfortable. Oh my gosh, you know, people right now are just—they feel bad for me. Well, who even knows if this is in the video? This is probably in the bloopers. <laughs> if anybody sticks around for the bloopers to watch our dysfunctional relationship, they're probably like, they need it's therapy. Not, no, no, no. There's if only if one you dysfunctional are, person If you are in the blooper squad and you stick around and see the bloopers, then you can comment therapy <laughs> down below. Comment me. therapy because clearly you <laughs> think we need it. Jack, please don't put that in the video. <laughs> I'll, I'll put in the bloopers. No. <laughs> okay.